Hi everyone. We are going to pick up on page 91 of Wonder. High school. What I always loved most about middle school was that it was separate from different fr and different from home. I could go there and be Olivia Pullman, not Via, which is my name at home. Via what was, was what they called me in elementary school too. Back then, everyone knew all about us, of course. Mom used to pick me up after school and August was always in the stroller. There weren't a lot of people who were equipped to babysit for Augie, so mom and dad brought him to all my class plays and concerts and recitals, all the school functions, the bake sales and the book fairs. My friends knew him, my friends' parents knew him, my teachers knew him, the janitor knew him. Hey, how you doing Augie? He'd always say and give August a high five. August was something of a fixture at PS22. But in middle school, a lot of people didn't know about August. My old friends did, of course, but my new friends didn't. Or if they knew, it wasn't necessarily the first thing they, they knew about me. Maybe it was the second or third thing they'd hear about me. Olivia? Yeah, she's nice. Did you hear that she has a brother who's deformed? I always hated that word, but I knew it was how people described Augie. And I knew those kinds of conversations probably happened all the time out of earshot every time I left the room at a party or bumped into groups of friends at the pizza place. And that's okay. I'm always going to be the sister of a kid with a birth defect. That's not the issue. I just don't always want to be defined that way. The best thing about high school is that hardly anybody knows me at all, except Miranda and Ella, of course and they know not to go around talking about it. Miranda, Ella, and I have known each other since the first grade. What's so nice is we never have to explain things to one another. When I decided I wanted them to call me Olivia instead of Via, they got it without me having to explain. They've known August since he was a little baby. When we were little, our favorite thing to do was play dress up with Augie, load him up with feather boas and big hats and Hannah Montana wigs. He used to love it, of course, and we thought he was adorably cute in his own way. Ella said he reminded her of E.T. She didn't say this to be mean, of course, though maybe it was a little mean. The truth is, there's a scene in the movie when Drew Barrymore dresses E.T. in a blonde wig, and that was a ringer for Augie in our Miley Cyrus heyday. Throughout middle school, Miranda, Ella, and I were pretty much our own little group. Somewhere between super popular and well-liked, not brainy, not jocks, not rich, not druggies, not mean, not goody-goody, not huge, not flat. I don't know if the three of us found each other because we were so alike in so many ways, or that because we found each other, we've become so alike in so many ways. We were so happy when we all got into Faulkner High School. It was such a long shot that all three of us would be accepted especially when almost no one else from our middle school was. I remember how we screamed into our phones the day we got our acceptance letters. This is why I haven't understood what's been going on with us lately. Now that we're actually in high school, it's nothing like how I thought it would be. Major Tom. Out of the three of us, Miranda had almost always been the sweetest to August, hugging him and playing with him long after Ella and I had moved on to playing something else. Even as we got older, Miranda always made sure to try to include August in our conversations, ask him how he was doing, talk to him about Avatar or Star Wars or Bone or something she knew he liked. It was Miranda who had given Augie the astronaut helmet he wore practically every day of the year when he was five or six. She would call him Major Tom and they would sing Space Oddity by David Bowie together. It was their little thing. They knew all the words and would blast it on the iPod and sing the song out loud. Since Miranda's always been really good about calling us as soon as she got home from summer camp, I was a little surprised when I didn't hear from her. I even texted her and she didn't reply. I figured maybe she had ended up staying in the camp longer now that she was a counselor. Maybe she met a cute guy. Then I realized from her Facebook wall that she'd actually been back home for a full two weeks. So I sent her an IM and we chatted online a bit, but she didn't give me a reason for not calling, which I thought was bizarre. 
Miranda had always been a little flaky, so I figured that's all it was. We made plans to meet downtown, but then I had to cancel because we were driving out to visit Tata and Papa for the weekend. So I ended up not seeing either Miranda or Ella until the first day of school. And I have to admit, I was shocked. Miranda looked so different. Her hair was cut into this super cute bob that she dyed bright pink, of all things, and she was wearing a striped tube top that A, seemed way inappropriate for school, and B, was not totally not her usual style. Miranda had always been such a prude about clothes, and here she was all pink-haired and tube-topped. But it wasn't just the way she looked that was different. She was acting differently, too. I can't say she wasn't nice, because she was, but she seemed kind of distant, like I was a casual friend. It was the weirdest thing in the world. At lunch, the three of us sat together like we always used to, but the dynamics had shifted. It was obvious to me that Ella and Miranda had gotten together a few times during the summer without me, though they never actually said that. I pretended not to be at all upset while we talked, though I could feel my face getting hot, my smile being fake. Although Ella wasn't as over the top as Miranda, I noticed a huge change in her style too. It's like they had talked to each other beforehand about redoing their image at the new school, but hadn't bothered to clue me in. I admit, I had always thought I was above this kind of typical teenage pettiness, but I felt a lump in my throat throughout lunch. My voice quivered as I said, see you later, when the bell rang. After school. I hear we're driving you home today. It was Miranda in eighth period. She had just sat down at the desk right behind me. I had forgotten that mom called Miranda's mother the night before to ask if she could drive me home from school. You don't have to, I answered instinctively, casually. My mom can pick me up. I thought she had to go pick up Augie or something. It turns out she can pick me up afterward. She just texted me, not a problem. Oh, okay, thanks. It was all a lie on my part, but I couldn't see sitting in a car with the new Miranda. After school, I ducked into a restroom to avoid bumping into Miranda's mother outside. Half an hour later, I walked out of the school ran the three blocks to the bus stop, hopped on, t on the M86 to Central Park West, and took the subway home. Hey there, sweetie, Mom said the moment I stepped through the front door. How was your first day? I was starting to wonder where you guys were. We stopped for pizza. Incredible how easily a lie can slip through your lips. Is Miranda not with you? She seemed surprised that Miranda wasn't right behind me. She went straight home. We have a lot of homework. On your first day? Yes, on our first day, I yelled, which completely surprised mom. But before she could say anything, I said, school was fine. It's really big, though. The kids seem nice. I wanted to give her enough information so she wouldn't feel the need to ask me anymore. How was Augie's first day of school? Mom hesitated, her eyebrows still high up on her forehead from when I'd snapped at her a second earlier. Okay, she said, slowly, like she was letting out a breath. What do you mean okay, I said. Was it good or bad? He said it was good. So why do you think it wasn't good? I didn't say it wasn't good. Jeez, Via, what's up with you? Just forget I asked anything at all, I answered, and stormed dramatically into Augie's room and slammed the door. He was on his PlayStation and didn't even look up. I hated how zombified his video games made him. So how was school, I said, scooching Daisy over so I could sit on his bed next to him. Fine, he answered, not looking up from his game. Augie, I'm talking to you. I pulled the PlayStation out of his hands. Hey, he said angrily. How was school? I said fine, he yelled back, grabbing the PlayStation back from me. Were people nice to you? Yes. No one was mean? He put the PlayStation down and looked up at me as if I had just asked the dumbest question in the world. Why would people be mean? He said. It was the first time in his life that I heard him be sarcastic like that. I didn't think he had it in him. The Padawan Bites the Dust I'm not sure at what point that night Augie had cut off his Padawan braid or why that made me really mad. I had always found his obsession with everything Star Wars kind of geeky. Uh, and that braid in the back of his hair with its little beads was just awful. But he had always been so proud of it, of how long it took him to grow it, of how he had chosen the beads himself in a craft store in Soho. 
he and Christopher, his best friend, used to play with lightsabers and Star Wars stuff whenever they got together, and they had both started growing their braids at the same time. When August cut his braid off that night, without an explanation, without telling me beforehand, which was surprising, or even calling Christopher, I was just so upset I can't even explain why. I've seen Augie brushing his hair in the bathroom mirror. He meticulously tries to get every hair in place. He tilts his head to look at himself from different angles, like there's some magic perspective inside the mirror that could change the dimensions of his face. Mom knocked on my door after dinner. She looked drained, and I realized that between me and Augie, today had been a tough day for her, too. So you want to tell me what's up? She asked nicely, softly. Not now, okay? I answered. I was reading. I was tired. Maybe later I'd be up to telling her about Miranda, but not now. I'll check in with you before you go to bed, she said, and then she came over and kissed me on the top of my head. Can Daisy sleep with me tonight? Sure, I'll bring her in later. Don't forget to come back, I said as she left. I promise. But she didn't come back that night. Dad did. He told me Augie had had a, first, a bad first day and Mom was helping him through it. He asked me how my day had gone and I told him fine. He said he didn't believe me for a second and I told him Miranda and Ella were acting like jerks. I didn't mention how I took the subway home by myself, though. He said nothing tests friendships like high school and then proceeded to poke fun at the fact that I was reading War and Peace. Not real fun, of course, since I'd heard him brag to people that he had a 15-year-old who was reading Tolstoy. But he liked to rib me about where I was in the book, in a war part or in a peace part, and if there was anything in there about Napoleon's days as a hip-hop dancer. It was silly stuff, but Dad always managed to make everyone laugh. And sometimes that's all you need to feel better. Don't be mad at Mom, he said as he bent down to give me a goodnight kiss. You know how much she worries about Augie. I know. I acknowledged. Want the light on or off? It's getting kind of late, he said, pausing by the light switch at the door. Can you bring Daisy in first? Two seconds later, he came back with Daisy dangling in his arms, and he laid her down next to me on the bed. Good night, sweetheart, he said, kissing my forehead. He kissed Daisy on her forehead, too. Good night, girly. Sweet dreams. An apparition at the door. Once, I got up in the middle of the night because I was thirsty, and I saw Mom standing outside Augie's room. Her hand was on the doorknob, her forehead leaning on the door, which was ajar. She wasn't going in his room or stepping out, just standing right outside the door as if she was listening to the sound of his breathing as he slept. The hallway lights were out. The only thing illuminating her was the blue nightlight in August's bedroom. She looked ghost-like standing there, or maybe I should say angelic. I tried to walk back into my room without disturbing her, but she heard me and walked over to me. Is Augie okay? I asked. I knew that sometimes he would wake up choking on his own saliva if he accidentally turned over on his back. Oh, he's fine, she said, wrapping her arms around me. She walked me back into my room, pulled the covers over me, and kissed me goodnight. She never explained what she was doing outside his door, and I never asked. I wonder how many nights she stood outside his door. And I wonder if she's ever stood outside my door like that. Breakfast. Can you pick me up from school today? I said the next morning, smearing some cream cheese on my bagel. Mom was making August lunch, American cheese on whole wheat bread, soft enough for Augie to eat, while August sat eating oatmeal at the table. Dad was getting ready to go to work. Now that I was in high school, the new school routine was going to be that Dad and I would take the subway together in the morning, which meant his having to leave 15 minutes earlier than usual, then I'd get off at my stop and he'd keep going, and Mom was going to pick me up after school in the car. I was going to call Miranda's mother to see if she could drive you home again, Mom answered. No, Mom, I said quickly. You pick me up or I'll just take the subway. You know I don't want you to take the subway by yourself yet, she answered. Mom, I'm 15. Everybody my age takes the subway by themselves. She can take the subway home, said Dad from the other room, adjusting his tie as he stepped into the kitchen. Why can't Miranda's mother just pick her up again? Mom argued with him. She's old enough to take the subway by herself, Dad insisted. Mom looked at both of us. Is something going on? She didn't address her question to either one of us in particular. You would know if you had come back to check on me, I said spitefully, like you said you would. Oh, God, Via, said Mom, remembering now how she had completely ditched me last night. She put down the knife she was using to cut Augie's grapes in half, 
still a choking hazard for him because of the size of his palate. I'm so sorry. I fell asleep in Augie's room. By the time I woke up, woke up, I know, I know, I nodded indifferently. Mom came over, put her hands on my cheeks, and lifted my face to look at her. I'm really, really sorry, she whispered. I could tell she was. It's okay, I said. Via, Mom, it's fine. This time I meant it. She looked so genuinely sorry I wanted to let her off the hook. She kissed and hugged me, then returned to the grapes. So is something going on with Miranda, she asked. Just like that she's acting like a complete jerk, I said. Miranda's not a jerk, Augie quickly chimed in. She can be, I yelled. Believe me. Okay, then. I'll pick you up, no problem, Mom said decisively, sweeping the half grapes into a snack bag with the side of her knife. That was the plan all along anyway. I'll pick Augie up from school in the car, and then we'll pick you up. We'll probably get there about a quarter to four. No, I said firmly before she'd even finished. Isabel, she can take the subway, said Dad impatiently. She's a big girl now. She's reading War and Peace for crying out loud. What does War and Peace have anything to do with have anything have to do with anything? Answered Mom, clearly annoyed. It means you don't have to pick her up in a car like she's a little girl, he said sternly. Via, are you ready? Get your bag and let's go. I'm ready, I said, pulling on my backpack. Bye, Mom. Bye, Augie. I kissed both of them quickly and headed toward the door. Do you even have a Metro card? Mom said after me. Of course she has a Metro card, answered Dad, fully exasperated. Yeesh, Mama, stop worrying so much. Bye, he said, kissing her on the cheek. Bye, big boy, he said to August, kissing him on the top of his head. I'm proud of you. Have a good day. Bye, Daddy. You too. Dad and I jogged down to the stoop stairs and headed down the block. Call me after school before you get on the subway, Mom yelled at me from the window. I didn't even turn around, but waved my hand at her so she'd know I heard her. Dad did turn around, walking backward for a few steps. War and peace, Isabel, he called out, smiling as he pointed at me. War and peace. And tomorrow we will pick up on 103.